UX Cake is all about developing the layers you need to be more effective in your work and to be happy and fulfilled in your career. I'm your host, Lee Allen Arredondo, and I'm a UX leader and leadership coach. UX Cake Episode 50, UX Writing, Ask Me Anything. Hello, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today's episode has lots of great information about UX writing as a specialty within UX. We're talking about some of the most useful soft skills, uh, the hard skills that are transferable from other industries. You'll get ideas on how to upskill your UX writing and on finding a mentor, as well as career trajectories for UX writers. My guest today is Laura Cosentino, who's a senior UX writer at Google. And this Ask Me Anything format was actually inspired by a LinkedIn post that Laura put out. Laura is an active mentor, and during mentoring, they were noticing a lot of the same questions would come up again and again. So they posted an Ask Me Anything on LinkedIn where they have a few thousand followers, actually, as a way to answer some common questions that a lot of people have. So when I saw this post, a light bulb really kind of went off for me. Way back in 2017, when I started this UX Cake podcast, I had spent years mentoring and had myself come across many, many common issues that people would have in UX. And starting the podcast was really kind of a way for me to move from that one-on-one mentoring to a one-to-many model. So I thought, well, let's have Laura answer these questions in a UX Cake episode. So here we are today. A little bit more about Laura. As I mentioned, Laura Costantino is a senior UX writer at Google. And for the past 10 years, Laura has worked at the intersection of editorial, marketing, and strategy. And they fully transitioned into UX content about three years ago. Now, as someone who went through a career change themselves, Laura is dedicated to helping other people of all backgrounds transition into UX while also being committed to developing content design and strategy as really pivotal parts of the UX discipline. All right, so let's jump into this Ask Me Anything about UX writing. Hi, Laura. Hi. Hi, Lee. How's it going? Good. Thank you so much for joining me on UX Cake. Yeah, excited to be here. Yeah, I have been looking forward to this conversation. We, we've we had a couple conversations online and in person, and so I am really excited to bring this to the audience because I know you have been answering so many questions on LinkedIn, so people have a lot of questions, and this is just, I'm really excited to kind of like extend this information to folks who might not know you yet. And so starting with you and who you are and your story, you made a change in your career into UX writing, and you're now at Google as a UX writer. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm happy to. So I always like to say that um, in the past 10 years, I work at the intersection between content marketing and UX. So I really started my career in content writing now around like over 10 years ago. Really, I actually have a background in media and film studies, but uh, that career sort of like ended quickly after graduate school. And I transitioned into tech, started doing content writing uh, in different aspects, but mostly focusing on editorial writing, kind of like longer form blog post uh, type of content and then move into social media writing so got to learn a little bit of that when facebook and twitter were still the hottest like platforms social media platforms and instagram was like super super new once i started doing social media marketing that's kind of like what helped me transition more into marketing and content strategy. So I also got to learn a bit of that and a good chunk of like copywriting for ads and all all sorts of like different like creative assets. 
uh, that were mostly digitally focused. So I've always been around content and writing just from like really different aspects. During my time as a marketer, I had the opportunity to work with some really amazing designers and art directors. And actually one of them was at the time transitioning himself from art direction to UX design. And so we got to talk and I learned that he was taking this class at um, a school in Seattle called School of Visual Concepts. And it was kind of like an introductory class in UX design. And I ended up taking the class myself, really enjoying it, finding myself very attracted by the principles of user experience and simply just this idea that instead of being focused more on the business, which was, you know, my goal as a marketer, right? Like focus on profit and return on investment and sales, et cetera, to right. really move very much more into the, the perspective of like, how do we help like user accomplish their task and make their experience you know, more pleasant and, and usable, et cetera, et cetera. And so I ended up doing a whole a full year certificate and discover UX writing that among, you know, all the different UX disciplines, one of them was UX writing. And the things just kind of like natural came together, my experience in writing and my sort of like newfound love for, for UX and really found like that could be a great opportunity for me to step out of marketing and transition my career into something different. And I went from, a marketing role at Amazon to a content strategy role. Um, I think a, a UX content strategy role. So I kind of like started the transition there and I actually still consider myself, mm-hmm. even though my official title is UX writer, I also consider myself a UX content strategy in the sense that I focus, yes, on the word in the, in the experience and in the product, but also thinking about content across how is the content organized how is a maintain how what's the content governance what is information architecture i feel also like anyone who works in ux you know their careers have a lot of different different aspects to them and then maybe then they have like one particular um area of expertise and so yeah i mean i did content strategy at amazon and then um actually took a year break, uh, a year sabbatical. I was very lucky to do that. That gave me the opportunity to upskill, continue like learning online on my own, started doing some mentoring, talking to people, really kind of like that helped me transition into a content designer role at Meta where I was for for a temporary assignment and now my role at Google. You know, I, I have to say during my, my sabbatical, that's actually when I started posting on LinkedIn quite a bit because I was abroad. Mm, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was living in Italy and I was, and it was actually during the pandemic and I was very concerned that I was like losing touch completely with the professional community and the, sure. the UX community. Right. So it was a way for me to try to like keep in touch with with people and share my voice yeah which is a great voice on LinkedIn (laughs) I think uh, you got some traction pretty quickly um, because you're talking about things that are you know very interesting in a very authentic way so thank you so much for sharing that your story with us And yeah, so now we're going to jump into this crazy idea. It's new for UX Cake, but I think uh, the Ask Me Anything is a format that has really kind of exploded (laughs) lately. I don't know, last few years. Yeah, so it's awesome that you did that, uh, that you kind of put that out there. And I'm excited to share some of these questions and your fantastic insights with people. So how about if we just jump in on some questions? Yeah, let's let's do it. All right. So I really like this question. I put it at the top because I feel like this is <laughs> soft skills is has always been kind of like at the core of my mission with UX Cake. So the question was, what soft skills seem most essential in helping individuals navigate UX writing roles? Yes. So this is actually a really 
cool question, I think, because so the first class I took in my UX design certificate just right after the introductory class was actually a soft skill class. Like yeah. it was called, yeah, soft skill for UX designers. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that really like got me thinking even before I fully transitioned into a career as a UX writer, like what are some of the skills that maybe I already have or like I can like practice or yeah to transition help you transition yeah that can like really help me transition into into this new career and definitely like going through you know the full transition doing like the interviews that's always been like top of mind right Um, especially because I wanted to make sure that you know, all these years of experience that I was bringing with me, even though I may be working like collateral kind of like different industries, I still gain like all these soft skills that can be like really, um, really important in the context of UX. And I, you know, I, I, I did actually answer these on LinkedIn and I, you know, I tried to like almost like summarize it as much as possible because I think we could talk about it quite a bit, but I said, three things collaboration communication and curiosity and I think you can kind of like move them around right but to me they're all very much like interconnected I think starting with curiosity like keeping an open mind I think it's very important for whoever is starting but also really for anyone at any level in UX for uh, so many reasons Yeah. yeah And, you know, from that, I think communication, right? Like communication, we are in meetings so much as UX practitioners. That's, I think, where we spend actually maybe almost most of our time. And and so communication is like really important, both like orally and in writing, you know, writing messages. We're on Slack, we're on chats, we're on Mm -hmm. email. So really trying. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. And it's, I agree with you 100% for UX in general. (laughs) My specialty is not UX writing, although I have done plenty of it in my career. (laughs) Yes. Um, It's definitely not my specialty, but awesome. Thank you for that. So that actually is very related to this next question, which is what skills, and maybe we can look at hard skills as opposed to soft skills, what skills are transferable from other industries into UX writing? And I'm going to take a guess at one. (laughs) Writing? (laughs) Maybe? Okay. (laughs) But there's got to be more. (laughs) Yes, 100%. I think, you know, writing is the foundation, right? It's the basis. You have to be a writer before you can be a UX writer. And to me, that means a lot of a lot of things. I'm also a mentor to people who are to career changers and early career people. And that's what I always tell them that really right? like, have you done any writing and especially career changers. I mean, a lot of the people who are today UX writers, UX writing leaders, content design leaders usually come from journalist backgrounds. Mm. I mean, we all, we, we do have like a very diverse array of backgrounds, but definitely a lot of people coming from journalism, from marketing. So disciplines that have like a really, really strong academia, like writing component. Um, and so I would say definitely the, the, the first one is writing um, in all sorts of capacities. And then like you were saying, I mean, a UX writer is a UX practitioner. So um, understanding UX writing, like, uh, sorry, UX in terms of like, what's the framework? What are the processes of UX? So, you know, sprinkling in a little bit of UX research, like be even being able to use Figma, for example, right? Mm, um, okay. That is definitely a skill that a UX writer sh- should have because, I mean, we may be like called to wireframe something, right? Mm, so mm-hmm. even some of like the basic um, hard skills for UX designers are actually the same kind of like hard skills for 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 UX writers. And then I think also thinking about like other transferable skills that are more like hard skills I'd say honestly probably 
starting with the writing is a really great start adding mm -hmm. on top of that being able to speak about like what the ux process is being able to show it done a little bit of uh, like i say prototyping some some research i think that's really the basis and then i personally tend to tell people that if you have a any sort of background in information architecture, content strategy, mm -hmm. um, that's incredibly valuable and also incredibly valuable for actually growing as a UX, as a UX writer. Mm. Anything that could be related to like taxonomies, like things like that. Right. Yeah, as you're talking, it reminded me of, I had Tori Podmajorski on, who wrote the UX, strategic UX writing book, several episodes ago in this season two, but you were talking about, you know, prototyping and Figma, and it reminded me of kind of her process, which is very much a UX process where you're looking at an end-to-end -end flow and you're kind of even storyboarding it out more or less so that you can understand, you know, you're not just looking at one piece at a time, you're looking at the whole thing more strategically. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Looking at the entire um, user journey for sure. And in an ideal case scenario, literally working hand in hand with the designer and the and the UX researcher. I mm -hmm. think that's the ideal state for any like UX team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll bet. Oh gosh, I have so many questions about that. I'm going to go ahead and throw in a couple questions myself because what that brings to mind is kind of the, the process. Where does UX writing fit into the UX process, right? Yeah, I think almost or any UX writer would say as early as, early as possible, as early as research, as early as product vision. Uh, one thing that you know, may, maybe people may not really be aware of, but actually UX writers can be really helpful in writing product nar narratives, value propositions. Um, so I think even like from that perspective, it's great to have a UX writer involved as early as possible. And I also think UX writers um, or content designers I kind of use that interchangeably, but it's a little bit controversial. So I'm going to say UX writer for, for now. I think w working with, with very closely with, with research, like I feel like there are some like real areas of similarities in like thinking about like the user experience and how content like influences how people think and, you know, how messaging works so yeah I would just say honestly as early as possible mm -hmm. yeah that makes a lot of sense all right so let's see also related what projects or upskilling can aspiring UX writers do to be more valuable candidates so this is sort of going back to that if for someone who's looking to move into UX writing, everyone in UX in general is looking for projects to add so they can get their foot in the door, that entry level role, that first role in UX. So yeah, what does that look like for UX writers? Yeah, I think, you know, if we've had this conversation, like even one or two months ago, I would have probably answered maybe something a little bit different, but I had a very mm. interesting conversation online with that kind of spur from me saying, oh, you really need two portfolios, um, one being a website and one being your portfolio deck, slide deck that you present during the interview, like and thinking specifically about people who are uh, aspiring UX writers. And actually I had to, um, you know, change my post because that was actually like my experience. I was speaking from like my experience from, you know, what I was sort of, what I always, what I always thought and also a US, a, a US perspective, obviously, but hiring managers actually started answering me and specifically UX writing and content design hiring managers saying, 
No, actually, a lot of us are okay with just writing samples. And mm. especially a big a UX, uh, a website can be a big barrier to entry because of the cost. And I mean, this was coming also from people kind of like from all over the world. Some, I think, like based in the US, some based in the UK. So mm -hmm. I had to sort of like really reconsider what, what I was saying and, you know, made another pulse. And I'm saying all of these to say that I think like right now, my answer to that would be um, really like focusing on writing no matter what. I think that's also mm -hmm. important, just like any writing sample a person may have, or even just like writing takes practice like a lot of other mm -hmm. things like the craft the mastery of writing takes practice so I would say I think doing some of that and then like I was mentioning you know start learning about like content strategy what that means if if a person doesn't know and um, really in terms of you know projects I would say kind of like really the depends what's what's available right I tell people that you know that work already in companies like or you know big or small I'm like is there anything you get get involved in right like can you talk is there a UX designer on your on you know even on like the extended team that you can start talking to I remember when I was trying to to transition into UX, I was lucky enough to already work at Amazon, but I actually did a lot of inter like UX research, like interviews, user interviews, but I was the not taker. Like I would volunteer to mm. UX researchers and say, would, you know, do you need someone to take notes? Because then I knew that I could like learn that skill, see how UX oh, research wow, actually great. works, you know, in real, in real mm -hmm. life and get exposed to that. So now I can say I've gone through that. I've gone to, you know, the, the whole kind of like process of being in the interview, diagramming afterwards, kind of like working with the researcher on insights and takeaways. So I think definitely, you know, if there's any opportunity at work, already try to use that if possible yeah, where you're working where you already are and volunteer opportunities too I mean with nonprofits a lot of folks will just reach out to that I think what's interesting is uh, for a writer it's almost a little bit of a lower barrier uh, like ent to entry because so few UX teams actually have the luxury of having specifically a writer, right? So for a designer, you're limited by what can actually be implemented. Whereas for a writer, regardless of what the design yeah. is, there have to be yes. words, there has to be content. And so, you know, you can actually probably get most, if not all of your words published, you know, or implemented. Uh, whereas design is, is definitely a little trickier. Yes. Yeah, I love that suggestion for look around where you are working for opportunities. That's great. Oh, I did have a follow-up question on the writing samples. So what, what type of writing samples, if you're looking for UX writing job, I would imagine they're going to want to see kind of your writing in conjunction with a design of some sort. Yeah. Just kind of like paint the picture for what type mm -hmm. of uh, writing samples are. Yeah, I think honestly, um, you know, I just want to make sure I clarify because I'm not a hiring manager. I'm speaking again from like my experience sure, interviewing sure. and what I think other people may mean when they speak of writing samples. I actually think it would be any any writing that's done for the Internet right? Like for the web. So any sort of like digital mm, writing, okay. even in, in my particular case, like I said, I was a marketer and I was, um, you know, in product marketing, kind of like brand marketing. So I did a lot of copywriting for sure. And so one of my projects actually was more from like my time in marketing and speaking about like, um, voice and tone which is something UX writers also work 
work on a UX writer has to be able to like understand what voice and tone are and like use them. Um, and so that's why I'm saying, you know, it could be even just copywriting for the for the web that maybe wasn't necessarily coming from mm-hmm. a UX perspective. But I think, you know, if you are be- becoming a UX writer, you can take what you already have, your writing sample, and start framing it in a U- from a UX perspective, right? Like it may not be a UX project per se but you can at least say why did you write it why did you write it in a certain way why does it have a certain voice and tone and you know what the what problem were you trying to solve right like what were the users like how right. this was helping users I mean it may not be of course like a, a full UX case mm-hmm. study but it can be at least same yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah okay so if you could pick an exercise to do once a week to enhance your U.S. Yes. writing skills, <laughs> what would it be? Yeah, I thought about this quite a bit because, okay, I'm going to give you two answer. One that I think is like really like straightforward Great. and probably makes more sense. And the other one maybe is a little bit more nonsensical, but it's also a little bit more me. <laughs> There is something called <laughs> there is something called daily UX writing challenge, and it's actually uh, it's it's a website. I can't unfortunately remember the name of the creator, but uh, this person created this website. You sign up, and every day for fifteen days, I think you get a prompt with kind of like a scenario, a problem, right? And so something just to like help you write a piece of copy. And I've seen actually very, you know, people who are trying to break into UX writing, using it even for their portfolio as one of those like writing samples that we were talking about. And it's, you know, it's great. I even done it myself now, now years ago. It's good to get some practice and have, you know, some really clear, like I said, scenarios and constraints. So it's it's definitely like great practice. One thing I would suggest is like, yes, I know it's daily, but one thing I, I do as a UX writer, I mean, I go through a lot of changes in my copy. I refine, 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 refine. You like, that's like design. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I would say, you know, don't just like take the prompt, do it and what's next right like let's wait for the day after no like really use it as if it was a ux problem like write the first copy write it again give yourself maybe more constraints like what if you're writing it in a celebratory tone versus like a neutral tone and yeah. just kind of like really mm-hmm. iterate on that yeah so that's a sensical answer the nonsensical for me is read i don't think you can be a good writer without reading a ton so read 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 as much as possible not just to gain knowledge but for the practice of reading seeing how other people write and really just read anything um yeah what's your favorite thing to read what are you reading right now uh what am i reading right now i'm reading a novel clara and the sun i also read the it's a yeah kazuo ishiguro clara and the sun i so i usually read in three formats i read on paper ebook and audiobook usually all three at the same time but right now i don't have a physical <laughs> book i'm reading <laughs> <laughs> nice there were a whole lot of questions about this and so i'm gonna go ahead and ask about finding a mentor and I hear this in UX in general all the time but from your perspective and from what you know good advice for finding a mentor and uh, let's start there good advice for finding a mentor in UX writing yeah I definitely think this is a bit of a of a hard question and I I would be interested in learning a little bit also like what you think but for me you know there is definitely like some platforms out there that can be used and they have a have a function in in my opinion but 
I think, you know, more kind of... By platforms, you mean websites like ADP? Like, list. Y- yeah, ADP list, UX, coffee hours, those are two that are coming to mind right now. I think there is something else called design bodies. But I think, you know, for me, I would really like to get more of a like a long term mentoring relationship, even just for myself, right, for mm-hmm. someone to like mentor me. And so I think you know, sometimes like companies have their own programs, definitely bigger companies do. Mm -hmm. Within the company. Yeah, within the company. Um, And then sometimes it's a matter of just, I don't know, really like ask, asking people (laughs) kind of like reaching out. I so far haven't had a, a ton of luck, but I definitely have mentors. Actually, one of my mentors is a former manager. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I always try to like relationships going as much as I can, as I can. I think, you know, my use of LinkedIn, like I said before, for me, it's all about like building connections and community. And so I see mentoring as a part of that for sure. I also think, you know, in my head, I think about mentoring in a number of ways, like there are mentors that I've had in my careers that were like people I kind of like, I aspire to be like them. And, you know, maybe they were like VPs or senior directors, and they were kind of like a few meetings, you know, it's like a certain type of like relationship. Mm-hmm. And then I also have people who are considered more like peer mentors, right? Like people who are going through the same stuff I'm going nice. through. People I also met online, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them or you know, co-workers, maybe not necessarily your teammates because you want the same space, right? To be able to talk. Mm-hmm. But and people in, like I said, like similar roles, maybe similar level of careers. And then for me, as a mentor myself, I, you know, I want to think about the mentor-mentee relationship as also like, you know, something valuable for both. So I, a while ago, listened to an episode of the Brené Brown podcast um, with uh, the guest, her name is Patrice Gordon, and she's a director at Virgin and an executive coach. And she was speaking about reverse mentorship, right? So the value of like the relationship between junior and sort of like senior members Mm -hmm. of a team. So I think about mentorship in a lot of different ways, for sure. Yeah, Yeah, I agree. I think mentorship has got benefits both ways for sure I've always been a big um, proponent of it and I have done a lot of it I think you you hit on something that I want to highlight here for folks because one of the things you talked about is meeting people and creating relationships with people and even if it's online somehow actually connecting with people versus going to LinkedIn And finding someone who, you know, does something that that is related to what you want to do and sending out, you know, connecting on LinkedIn and asking them if you could, you know, meet with them (laughs) to give them advice or whatever. You know, I get asked that so often. And these are people who I don't know. I have no connection with whatsoever. And it's not that I don't care. I care about a lot of people, but I also have limited time, right? And so, whereas I also get asked by people I know (laughs) to have a coffee or a conversation with someone they know, or, you know, recently did this for a friend's daughter who's finishing Mm -hmm. up the HCDE program at UW. So I think it's really important for people to realize that you do need to have some kind of connection (laughs) with someone for it to be for that to be successful and you can make connections with people online slack is a great way a great place to do that i see people really kind of getting to know each other in slack groups there's various ux slack groups there are also ux groups on linkedin mm-hmm. those are some of the examples that that i would throw out there for folks 
Yeah, I I agree with you. And actually that's that's very, very true. And some of the people I am today, like even friends with, even though maybe I never met in real life, but that I consider friends are people who I met on LinkedIn, but like you said, because you know, I post something and they reply and then I would reply. And so really building, yeah, I think building that conversation mm-hmm. before kind of like call the messaging is super important. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah. We have time for one last question. And so mm-hmm. and I like this one. What does the career trajectory look like for a UX writer? From your perspective, you know, what do you think the next steps in your career are? Yeah, I think, you know, from from what I see out there, that trajectory is actually still being defined. But I am very excited to hear, you know, people who started in content and are becoming like UX director, VPs of design. So I really think, you know, the... The sky is the limit, to to be honest, in terms of what the trajectory could be. Um, for me, in particular, <laughs> I'm yeah, honestly, like I'm not sure, but like I would say, uh, next step, people's management. I think yeah, I've been an individual contributor my entire career, so if I think about like next step, without maybe going, you know, ten years from now or whatever. Um, it, I would, I think, like really like to have an opportunity to um, to manage people because I enjoy mentoring so much, and I want to see how you know how applicable that can be in a people's manager position. Yeah, what do you think about the idea of managing multiple disciplines within UX? I mean, the UX discipline, but specialties managing folks in multiple specialties design research as coming from a writing background yeah I mean I think you know in general like the I think the skill of like managing people can be like applicable and to a lot of different situations I do think content people are also like very uniquely positioned to understand visions and narratives and like I was saying before I also think there is you know, quite a connection between content, content strategy, content UX writing and and product management because content people do often actually think about like the big picture. Mm -hmm. And like we were saying before, you know, it is also about thinking about the whole like user journey, but almost like even beyond that, like with the entire experience. And so I do think, content people are like uniquely positive. Also in day-to-day life, we collaborate with the other disciplines all the time. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like also know just as much as I think UX designers would know what our struggles are, we know what their struggles are and kind of like same with research. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for um, all of your fantastic insights. I definitely want to make sure that people know that they follow you on LinkedIn and so go ahead and maybe you want to spell your name yeah I I can I can spell it it's L-A-U-R-A so it's just like Laura but because I'm originally from Italy I say Laura and then my last name Costantino so it's C-O-S-T-A-N-T-I-N-O Thank you so much. It was uh, like such a pleasure talking to you today. Yeah, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I wanted to share with you some resources that Laura shared with me about UX writing. There is a book, Strategic Writing for UX by Tori Podmajerski. And I want to note that I interviewed Tori Podmajerski and we talked about UX writing and Strategic Writing for UX in episode 33. There's another book called Content Strategy for the Web by Christina Halverson, another book called Cultivating Content Design by Beth Dunn, then a couple of websites, workingincontent.com, and then a Slack group, Content and UX, which you can find out more about at contentandux.com. Org. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love to know. 
You can connect with UX Cake on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. And also, please share this podcast with anyone that you know who might enjoy it. That really helps us reach more people with this content. Bye for now.